Welcome to Odds.com MLB Playoff Coverage. The Atlanta Braves have just put the finishing touches on a 5-1 Game 1 victory in the NLCS over the Los Angeles Dodgers. Noli Knows has joined us to find the best angles to get us paid in Game 2. Noli Knows, how are you, my friend? Uh, well, not doing too well, Jimmy. You mentioned it right there. The Atlanta Braves uh, putting a whooping on the Dodgers. A lot of those runs coming in late. You know, they were able to get to the bullpen. But hats off to them. You know, they were able to put some at-bats together. But I'm excited for what's to come with these with these playoffs, and I'm ready to talk baseball. Blake Trinan was touched in the ninth inning. Let's talk about it right now. The odds are available for us. This total Anderson versus Kershaw sits at seven and a half. The Dodgers have opened up between minus 155 and minus 160 favorites. Let's break this down. 6.05 p.m. Eastern, it pops off. Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. Ian Anderson, what a revelation he has been for the Atlanta Braves in the regular season. Three and two, 1.95 ERA, 1.08 whip, 41 Ks and 32 and a third with 14 walks in the playoffs, he has not allowed an earned run. 2-0, 0 ERA, 0 0.69 whip, 11 and two-thirds, 17 Ks, three walks, going up against Clayton Kershaw. I love talking Kershaw in the playoffs because I don't know what he's going to bring. I expect him to be good early, and then I expect to see back-to-back -back moonshots off him somewhere around pitch 85. Kershaw in the regular season, 6-2, 2.16 ERA, 0 0.84 whip. He had a great, great year. His velocity was up. There was no back pain. 62 Ks, 8 walks. In the playoffs, 2-0, 1.93 ERA, 0 0.71 whip. 19 Ks, 1 walk. Those are very good numbers. But all I remember is back to back moonshots off him and him sitting in the dugout going, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the playoffs are my daddy. I, I I can't explain what happens to him, but those are very, very good numbers. Before we get into Braves versus lefties, Dodgers versus righties, talk about the pitching matchup, Anderson Kershaw, Nolly. Yeah, this is a, a really good matchup here. Some that I really I'm really, really looking forward to. Ian Anderson has been really phenomenal in the entire season. And you look at his advanced numbers, they're right there along with it to match it. Not a guy with a lot of spin rate on his fastball or his curveball, but can locate a lot of pitches. And that's a that's something that's very special. Here's going to be very exciting for him, going to be able to pitch in front of his family for the first time as a Major League Baseball player, something that's got to be – got to be getting the nerves going. But he, he he's shown that he's able to pitch in this postseason. Like you said, hasn't given up a single run. And here he's going to face – probably the most potent lineup he has faced all season. He did face the New York Yankees, but mind you, they were missing three of their big bats in Staten, Judge, and LeMahieu. So here, this is going to be his toughest test, facing a Dodger lineup that can that can hit righties typically. And on the other typically. side, you said it, typically. <laughs> but here on the other side, Clayton Kershaw, I mean, he's he's looked extremely good. Here in the playoffs, he did give up back-to-back -back home runs, and you mentioned it. When he gets later into the innings, that's when we tend to worry about Clayton Kershaw. Here, even across the 2020, in the seventh inning, he's got an ERA of 5.4. Late in the fifth inning, 3.24. But overall, his numbers for the season are much lower. So indication that he d he can't get hit later on in the in the in the game, and especially in the playoffs, that's what he's shown. His being susceptible in the seventh inning. Uh, but can he control this, this Atlanta bats? He has in the postseason once in 2018, mind you, a couple years back, but a lot of the similar pieces. And he did fit, pitch well against them last year, went six and two-thirds, nine hits, four and runs. Still a solid start by my standards. And, yeah, he gave up the two bombs, but still only six, only three runs over six innings of, uh, and against a good lineup. Uh, but here, I think he pitches well just early. And it's it'd be a tough game, though. I, I like uh, I like his chances, though. Is this a dangerous Dodgers lineup, Noli? Because three weeks ago, five weeks ago, you could have said yes. Even though Bellinger wasn't hitting, they were getting big numbers from other bats that still made them dangerous. Look, this was a, a potent 
offense, even though last year's MVP wasn't rolling. Now the Dodgers versus righties in the postseason, 224 with a 654 OPS. During the regular season, 259, 837 OPS. But it has fallen off. The opposite has happened with Braves versus lefties. 248, 754 OPS during the regular season. Now a robust 353, 1.036 OPS. Let's start with the Dodgers bats. 224, 654 OPS in the postseason. Do you trust them? Yeah, I mean, that... I mean, you see it here today, only one run here against Atlanta. But mind you, against against the San Diego Padres, put up 5-6 and then 12 runs in the last game. So it's still a ball club that can manufacture some runs. They did have a lot of runners on base early, just weren't able to get the key hits. That's a big question. And that's why I said typically they are able to hit righties. But this is no ordinary righty. This is a guy, his advanced numbers tell me that his numbers are for real. Um, I'm expecting them to to shut down these bats once again. Uh, this lineup that hasn't shown me much, especially going against this great bullpen of theirs. So, re- cause for concern, definitely for as for me as a Dodger fan. Well, let's talk about gambling, not fandom. Let's talk about making money here, because I think the Braves go up two zero, and when they go up two zero. We know that they've had a lot of injuries to their pitching staff. And then would be the time to buy in on the Dodgers. That's the way I see this series going. Now, I have lost seven straight playoff bets. I pumped the brakes for the last few days, took a step back. But I'm telling you what, Noli, I want to double up here on the Braves' first five and full game. The first five isn't out on my at my book yet. The full game is. First five is out. First five right now. Kershaw is up to minus 170 at some books, minus 160 at others. It is a uh, juicy money line. You can get up to plus 140 and, and up for Ian Anderson. First five, which means... We have a seven and a half total for the game, a four first five total, which means that you can get the Braves plus a half at a decent price. Let's see what it is right now. If I want the Braves plus a half minus 110, that seems like a really nice bet. From a betting perspective, Noli, how are you going to handle this game? Yeah, I mean, hard to argue with that, especially you you alluded to it, the way that they've been able to hit these lefties in this postseason. This is a scary lineup. This is number one and two, but the Dodgers only scored one more run than the Atlanta Braves. It's almost dead even, and you talk about the potential for the hitting, but the Atlanta Braves have been able to do it more consistently, so I can understand your angle. The one concern is Ian Anderson here. Am I going to keep trusting him in the playoffs? Am I going to trust him in this spot? Um, I believe this is the most emotional spot for him that he's ever pitched in, pitching in front of his family. But I do expect him to succeed. Those numbers are not there. Those numbers just simply I can't ignore. And here with Clayton Kershaw, I'm a believer in what he's done, especially the way he's looked here in the postseason early. I expect both pitchers to to succeed here early. I like the first five under four, and I'm going to stick with that. I don't want to mess around with the third time around because, albeit both bullpens are very good, I mean, the Dodgers got lit up late, and the Braves' bullpen is great, but these these bats can wake up, and I want to stay away from the third time around. Noli, first five under four. I plan to move on the first five plus a half. I'll wait till that is available for me, and I'm going to take the Braves' full game, and after that, If the Braves are up 2-0, I'm going to bet on the Dodgers to win the series and change everything. These Dodgers have yet to see Ian Anderson. Never seen him before. The Braves against Kershaw are batting 215 with a 298 slugging. Two home runs in 191 at-bats, Noli. Man. Two home runs and 191 at bats, a 540 OPS. Oh, that takes a bit of the wind out of my sails when I say that out loud. 
And the first five under four is sort of juiced. Let's see what it is right now. See what the best line you can get. First five under four is at about minus 120 right now. Between minus 120 and minus 125. And Noli, when we wake up in the morning, do you expect that four to still be here? No, I don't. I, I really don't. Um, just especially because the numbers would indicate it and then public perception of what these pitchers have done and especially what's been happening in these prior games. You're talking both all three games so far in this in this series, championship series, have gone under the total in the first five well, and full game. So I think uh, the public will be coming in on the under trying to ride the train. So I would see it, I would see it going down at three and a half. It's four right now. If you are watching this video live, 1.36 in the morning Eastern time, you have a four available. If you are lazy and sleeping, when you wake up, it may not be. And it's not available at Bet365. It's not available at the book I can attack. But the full game is available. And I'm going to back the Braves' first five and full game. I'll be curious to see what the line is on the first five total in the morning. There we go. Braves, Dodgers, 6.05 p.m. ET. An official bet from Noli Knows on the first five under four. And for me, I'm first five plus a half on the Braves and full game Braves. Before we move on to the next game, do you feel uncomfortable with your bullpen? Trinan just got touched. Kenley Jansen's velocity is down. I don't know if I trust Joe Kelly. Speak to me about the Dodgers bullpen. Yeah, there, there are, there are some holes, and depth can be an issue. While, while we do have depth in the starting pitching, if we, we expect there to be more depth, as we're gonna have to give up that depth to try to get more depth in the, in the bullpen. Uh, seeing that they were able to get to a slate. That is a big cause for concern, specifically when you're talking about these games with no breaks. You know, if this game goes seven games, it's that seven straight days. Even if it goes five, that's very taxing on the bullpen. A lot of guys were used today. So that is a cause for concern, definitely, especially when you look at the Braves. Braves bullpen has just been lights out, and uh, that's very scary. That was something that was their weakness last time we faced this team in the playoffs. And this time, that seems to be one of their strong points. They win and attacked it, and uh, and hats off to them. They're they're doing what they can to win. So it definitely is a cause for concern. The one one big piece is that that I love to see is Gatterall, though. That's the one shining moment, shining guy out there. But there aren't too many right now. So uh, yeah, definitely concerned. Gatterall throwing heat, hundred mile an hour heat. The Braves bullpen, as Noli alluded to. 0.39 ERA, 0.60 whip in the playoffs. Interestingly enough, the Dodgers bullpen has the exact same numbers as they did in the regular season. 1.04 whip, just like they had in the regular season, and their ERA is at 2.77, where it was at 2.74 during the regular season. There it is. Braves-Dodgers NLCS Game 2. 